one. My issue is, why is it so easy to throw away like all black women instead of just saying I had one bad experience with one black woman and now I'm I'm gonna keep my eye open for these red flags yeah. instead yeah. of just being like, oh, duh. just throwing away because a whole race. Women in general can be absolutely emotional, crazy women. Women, yes. just in general. Women That's in general. Very yes. true. Y'all getting swept up in this white supremacist society. Yeah. <laughs> If y'all think it's just us, like y'all getting, y'all mm-hmm. feeding into the stereotypes that they put out into Absolutely. the world about sure. black women. If you just all of a sudden sweep us mm-hmm. all under one rug, yes. yeah. we all might be, you know, uh, ready to, to go to bat for what we believe in, mm-hmm. but we're not all going to come out in this, come at it in the same way. We're yeah. not all slashing tires. Like nope. we're not all keying cars. We're not all throwing brooks in windows. Hey guys, welcome back to our Real, real Love scenario. scenario. Shout Hi. out to all our real lovers out there. We are back with another episode and a very special episode. A very special episode with a very special person. Yes. I have the honor to introduce her. She's an award-winning journalist, mm-hmm. media personality. Listen, just like our first guest, yes. we could run down all the, things, all the things. All the things. All the things. You've seen her on today. Okay. Okay. The today. Okay. Not like the day of the week. The today show. Thank yes. You. Okay, you have seen her on her very own show more than that Mm -hmm. as the host. If you don't know who I'm talking about, welcome my girl, Miss Gia Pepper. That was cute, Rhonda. I really like that. Okay, good. I love okay, that. good. I hey love guys. you deeply. I love you so much. It's so good to see you and not yes. just see y'all on the timeline, <laughs> on the internet, and in the DMs yes. and texts. Yes, yes, God yes. is good when yes. we do it. Yeah, it's quick, bad. quick, short yeah. story. Oh, yes. you got a short story. Go short ahead. story. Go ahead. I met Gia years and years ago at BT. Yes, and literally just magnetic energy thank is you. you. Like you, you make everyone feel like they're your friend. Oh, thank you. And that is such. a a good feeling especially in a in a space like an entertainment space because a lot of times you get in those spaces and people don't mm-hmm. you don't feel that warm feeling you it's might see true. that from them like on the screen mm-hmm. but then when you meet them it's like we wow, know and you we would, know many we, we know <laughs> we know plenty and we won't go there we won't go there but you have always been just genuinely kind Thank and you. fun and sweet and it's like i love her and Thank anytime you. we were working i'm like i hope gia's coming <laughs> on this particular trip Hello. i hope gia i hope they hired gia for the car amen hallelujah yes. yes it was so much fun and also like i have to say Rhonda, like you you make everyone feel at home and that's mm-hmm. also another thing that like is a major yeah. gift and a major blessing Thank because you. especially we know productions can be crazy yes. yeah. and if you have the wrong type of energy around at any part yeah. sure. any part it could be the person that opened the door like yes. it doesn't matter the driver the whatever but when you have people on set yeah. from the production side who understand like how to take care of others it doesn't sure. matter if they're the gender or the talent yeah. that makes a difference so yeah. we've always had so much fun i love yeah. you i love <laughs> shout out to lola i get sis lola yes, yes. um but yeah we've had so much fun over the years and so i'm so proud of you thank you i'm, I'm so proud of you thank you i'm sorry we have a fast we have a fast we have a fast we have a fast we're gonna reel it in we're gonna reel it they're having a moment it's fine and you as well nice to meet you no it's it's such an honor to meet you too it's funny i've heard your name so many times wow. whether from Rhonda or just different people in the industry and I feel like there's even been times to where we possibly were in the same space I'm at sure. the same time mm-hmm. I think uh you did culture con in New York right yeah yeah shout out to Amani Ellis but like I was <laughs> I was doing that too and I saw your name on there and I was like maybe I'll get a chance I always hear Rhonda talking about it I hear your name in circles but we never had the chance yeah, to I actually to like you talking about the one just happened in New York yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to leave literally like I was uh, one of the morning panels yeah, and I had to leave that oh, day gotcha, I didn't get gotcha. to stay for the whole time yeah, but yeah. I was more towards the end of the day yeah, so, yeah. okay yeah but no, now that we was here. lit we now here. We're finally here. welcome to our home welcome. thank you I'm happy to be in the house or whatever it's cute <laughs> welcome welcome well, we're excited to have you here thank you uh, this is Real Love Scenario yes and for those who don't know if you're just now here it's a show where Rhonda and I give our opinions on love and what our real lovers write in their real life love scenario. Yep. But for you today, we have a segment called Real Love or Real Lane. All right, let's do it. And we want to get your opinion on some of these, you know, situations and you yeah. got to let us know. If Can you... I ask y'all questions real quick? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Y'all, you're married. I yes. am married. I'm single. You're single. Okay, yes. same, I'm single. Okay. All right. So. Okay, so I'm glad we, we, we have the context this. 
Uh-huh. We have the context. How we're entering this space. <laughs> there we go. It should be fun. It should be fun. It should be fun we conversation. So. <laughs> All right. So the first one, you ready? Yes. While on a date, the guy pulls out a deck of dating cards with questions to help him navigate the conversation. Because he's not a professional like you. He needs some help. You know what I mean? Okay. Is that real love or real lame? What date are we on? Spurs. No. No. No, no. It's not not real, real love or real lame. It's just <laughs> no. No. <laughs> real lame real only lame. because if you are coming into it like a pull out of like if you're pulling out a deck of cards. I feel like first date questions are very, very easy. I feel okay. like that's the I, that should be the easiest date yeah. because it's like, who are you? What do you do? What are your interests? What do you like? Yeah. Um, most time, what about you on this app? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> what was your last one? I feel like that's just conversational. Yeah. And if you are, and if you are, if you need some help, just remember a couple questions beforehand. Like, like I just feel like bring I, it out. Like I feel put like it, it would to be memory. an interview. Gotcha. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. I legit would be like, "Am I at work? Is on set? <laughs> we on set?" Like I would. I, it, it would. It would throw me off. It would turn you off. So you ask what date number? Is there a date number to where you'll be like, "Ah, oh, it's fine." Yeah. What? What? what if what? we're like in the house and there's a a bottle of wine and like I've done that before and I love that. Gotcha. Like yeah. that's fun. Yeah. Or even if it's like, you know, we're we're at. A, a park or a picnic or a beach or something yes. like that like date three you know date four like things like that where you are you've gotten a vibe but you want to go deeper that's and, what I was about to say you want to yeah. find more thought provoking and a lot of the card decks do that they they, do. they write questions where you're like dang I wouldn't have thought about this exactly yes and yes. I'm fine with that yeah. but first date I feel like is it, it is so it shouldn't be that much pressure got you those d- those decks have you those decks be like how can i love you better in t- internally and externally for the value of our relationship like you that's like too, dang so i true. just met you that's talk to me about a childhood one. trauma yeah. that you have you're still processing talk to me about that time we had a fight and i hurt you what exactly did you get hurt by when i said it and how, like you, you like i just met you and you had no fight yet. Yeah, yeah so sometimes you know and even on the third day like i've had instances where i've yeah. been with a guy who i didn't really like we hadn't been yeah, there yeah, yet yeah. we were just getting to know each other so even those you had to be like you can't answer this i don't know you like that we ain't here yet yeah, skip a few <laughs> i'm not in love like you know like yeah. Yeah, but some. there are some that are just like oh this is good so you know gotcha. but i think you have to have a at least an understanding of the person before you do a, a gotcha. deck okay no that makes sense yeah so, so guys, the first one make really sure you know that don't bring out the cards on the first day not the first not the first, not the first one or the second one or read the them third at one. home Take some time. and then put a put, put a couple to memory. to memory there you go and break them out during yeah. dinner or, or lunch or wherever you are <laughs> yeah we're also what how old are y'all i'm 29 39 32 we also have been dating for a while at this point yeah you should so have, you have a, a couple. Little, you little, have a couple in the tank. <laughs> a little, little dating etiquette, or something that you know you, you should know side. already. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. But maybe it hasn't been going well for them, and they try and switch it up. Oh, that's true. Okay, I, you know, I can respect that's, that. That's intentionality. Now, you that, Dre team got team men, that's and I love that. And he's like that man's taking some effort. He's now, intentional. If he, you, mm, okay, have you ever pulled out a card? Well, deck. Date I thing. never got to that point in my life to where I felt like I needed that assistance. Mm-hmm. So no, I have. But not. your friends ha- like have you had the con- convo with your friends before? Well, no, uh, <laughs> I don't have any friends have done it either. But in this situation, <laughs> I feel like this guy that he needs it. He needs it. Okay, he just needs some help. You know. Okay. Yeah. If you if you if you like, <laughs> if you say now I'm really bad at first dates and I really want to get to know you, but I'm having trouble. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask you some of these questions? This guy, I probably still would be like. They better be bomb. They better be the. If it's like, <laughs> what's your middle name? I will fight. Like you could ask me that. <laughs> Stop. It better be like something super something dope. Like, something tell me good. about the first time that you knew that love was real in your life. Like, it's got to be something, something like, got you, fire plane. Yeah. But I agree with you. Just put it to memory. Yeah. You'll be yeah. all right. Just a couple. Yeah. Remain. Because if we can't cool, hold a conversation on the first date, doing? then what are we doing? Here? Yeah. True. You're right. True, true. Okay, that's good. That's okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. you kind of, you kind of flipped me on that one. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, next one. 
You're in between hair appointments. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus. Mm -mm -mm. God, good God. And your partner offers to help you manage and style your hair. Is that real love or real lame? Real love. That's real love. Real love. He may not know what he's doing, but he tried. Come on in (laughs) here. Yeah. (laughs) Baby, just get the back for me, All you got to do is put the oil back there, and you just put your fingers. Do you see it's a pattern already? Just slide it through. Just slide it through. Pat it a little bit. I agree. I love, I mean, and and we'll get into social media content a little bit later, but I'm not going to lie. The videos of like the husband or the boyfriend, like helping wash your hair. I'm like, Jesus, that please. And I want my man to be willing to just get in the trenches and get the, get the dandruff off a little bit. See, I could do that. I, I, I'll, I'll wash your hair and condition it. Cause I can scrub. It's not much effort, but you asked me to do all the other stuff. You, you're not, in, you're not flat ironing. I'm I, I, you don't want me to flat iron. That's <laughs> also the thing. True. You don't, you also don't want true. me to no, do I don't. it. Also true. <laughs> I really don't. It's limits. It's limits. But I want you to at least be open to it. Yeah. If I show you how to do it and you're like, okay, I can do that. Yeah. Like that's fire to me. I do okay. it the opposite way too. I'll be like, babe, like just trim that back. Exactly. Up. I can't, I can't, I can't that wait. Yes. I'll be watching the girls do that <laughs> thing too. It too. I'll be like, okay, just I'm in case make an appointment for tomorrow. Just in case I mess it up, but let's. <laughs> <laughs> but let's try, let's try. I love that. That's, I can't wait. That that's so like cute. my wife. It's like she get too excited sometimes. I'll be like, you gotta like calm down this a little my bit. Hair, like girl. this, my, <laughs> right, <I'm> not, <laughs> I got somewhere to go t- tonight. Like you can't just be <laughs> making a point, but just in case I mess it up. Just I'm in like, case, just the case. Real love. Okay, so we got love. one real lame, one real love. Yes. All right, last one. After three weeks of dating, the person sends you a playlist of love songs dedicated to you. Three weeks. Three After weeks. three weeks of dating. Love it. Love it. Real love. Real love. Real love. But also real love bombing because three weeks means. For a playlist? <laughs> if you, it, what's on it's the playlist? playlist? What's on the playlist? It's what's the on the playlist? Real love because, <laughs> because I've been love bombed like that and you then you got to delete the playlist when they gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, they remind you of them, Because yeah. my thing is, all right, playlist, I, music is definitely a love language. Yes. So I, I like what would be super dope is if within week three these are songs that like we've listened to together or remind me of you or like you know but like keep but them like, like songs like songs not love songs. don't give me no ass <laughs> I swear to god if you put no ass by stevie wonder we fighting immediately <laughs> so <laughs> so you know me that well it's three weeks so you know so you know no so you want three weeks. so and you it, want me and and you if it's if the man does mm-hmm. and he stands on that all right straight yeah mm-hmm. but like just i will get the fairy tale it's it's really self you know, self regulating, I would have to do here. I'll be like, now, nah, do you, he don't know you like that. Just, 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 just skip over that yeah, one. Pull it in. Put, put on, it in. Put on some Ja Rule and Ashanti. Don't put on Maybe this he one. He means he wants to feel like Hello. this, not like he feels like this right now. Exactly. You That's you and I like have that. that self talk. I like that. You do. You I do. Like that. Okay. But no, play, playlist, fire. Fire. Okay, good. Okay, good. good. That's good. That's good. Okay, Great awesome. Job. Thank you. Good job. Thanks, Very good job. Thanks. All right, so listen, we're going to jump into. Just some questions. Okay. Hmm. You know, I love that we're flipping this because you're normally in this seat. You talk to so many people. Yes. Prominent people, movers and shakers, but you too are a mover and shaker. Well, thank you so much. Um, you've done so much in your career, as we talked about in the introduction. But I want to go back to little Gia. Oh, yes. I want to <laughs> go back to what it was like at home. If you don't know that Gia is a big family person, she is. You you can't see her and know her without knowing yes. that she loves her family. Obsessed with them. Yes. <laughs> so I want to know, like, growing up, what was kind of your experience at home? Your parents, I know that they're they're together but Mm kind of talk about how you saw love in your house hold as a little girl that's so good that's such a great question for my my upbringing first of all born in dc raised all over maryland so when i say the dmv i always be like you know the people you know dc people don't fight but i don't care (laughs) dmv i say what i say (laughs) um but no i so um You know, I don't, you know, remember being a baby, of course, but my first memories of my parents were very like they were young and adorable. Like Mm. when looking back at it now, they were young and figuring it out. Um, We got our first house house um, in Maryland, in Bowie and Mitchellville, Maryland. Mm -hmm. And like all of us, I was like all of them. And, um, Mm -hmm. And I remember like birthday parties. My mom loved throwing huge birthday parties. I remember village. I remember family. Mm -hmm. I remember 
people show up for people. My mother, I think her love language is acts of service, if anything. Mm. My sis ain't really big on affirmations. She ain't really lovey-dovey. Like, she gonna, she gonna get you together. She's tough, but yeah. she gonna be there. Yeah. And my dad's love language is definitely words of affirmations, also acts of service, mm -hmm. but very, like, loving, very calm, very, like, Randall on This Is Us. Like, very, like, oh, you're just so cute. You just, you did. And so, <laughs> um, you know, I... I learned very early on that love is possible, mm -hmm. um, that love is is extraordinary and ordinary. Mm -hmm. Like the ordinariness of love is yeah. what I witnessed more than anything. Yeah. So I thought it was so ordinary that I didn't really realize how hard you had to work for mm -hmm. love to find you or to find it if you don't have love. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning like as a single woman in my thir early 30s, I was like, hey, this so I don't just wake up and a man ain't just gonna be there and like, like what, you, what you talking about? Like, how is he not showing up? Like, I don't why know if y'all picking up on it real quick. Gia can impersonate Beyonce. Oh God, so well. Oh, we gotta get that before we, we gotta leave. get it. We yeah. getting it slightly. I hope so because I don't. I haven't done it in so long because I just stopped because I thought Beyonce didn't like it. But anyway, <laughs> Beyonce, I don't know if you care, but I, I just always am scared because Beyonce be lurking. You know, BB be lurking on the she internet. Be lurking. So I don't know. She sees stuff. She sees stuff. For so sure. I don't like. And then I watch like how like if you watch the people who really impersonate her like and make it a thing, mm -hmm. they never like are invited to things. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Okay, so, so no, we're gonna scratch. That's it. why I'm always like. <laughs> That's why I stopped because I was like, you know, maybe she doesn't like. That's this. what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. Possible. You notice like most of the people who impersonate you don't know, you know, around, you know, um, but <laughs> yeah, I learned that love is um big and small. It's honest. It's scary. It's beautiful. It's tough. It's everyday work. Mm. Um, it's a choice. It's a verb. It's an act. Um, but as a child, I just, I, I felt loved. I, it was complicated because I'm the oldest of three. Mm -hmm. I have um, a little brother and a little sister. I definitely was not the little girl that asked for siblings. I was <laughs> not that girl. Like yeah. I was totally fine in my life, in my world. And then when they came, my mom told me that both times I asked to take them back to the hospital. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I was both like, times. we're done. Yeah. Thank you so much this for bringing cute. over these kids. Yeah. Uh, I don't want them. They can go. Wow. wow. And they were like, no, these are your siblings. And I was like, <laughs> don't know what that means, but <laughs> they're taking up too much of my time. And so that was wild. I think, um, but now, like, they're my best friends in the world. Yeah. And again, yeah. obsessed and so proud and so grateful to yeah. be their, yeah. their their older sister. But yeah, love was, was uh, abundant mm -hmm. in my childhood and, and, and still is abundant in my life today. We just, you know, need some romantic abundance in the name of Jesus. <laughs> amen. amen amen no i love that so when you say if you look at let's say the biggest lesson about love that you learned from your parents would you would say or would you say that it was like understanding that love and relationships is hard work or would it be something different i think love and relationships yeah is is i think is the choice it's a verb it's a choice it's That's an everyday the like decision to show up for someone else that is the person you made the promise to when you got married, like through the ugly times, through the great times, yeah. through the times where you're so moved either way that you want to cry. Like you are there for this person because you love them and, yeah. and, and you respect them and you value them. You might not even always like them, for but sure. you're always there. Like yeah. that, that's my person. That, that's my ride or die. Mm -hmm. We going on trips. We did like, it's, 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 it's more than romance. That's what I realized yeah, yeah. early on. It's like, it's a partnership. It's a friendship. It's a, it's a person you build life with. Yes. So you really have to at least respect them and value them enough to mm -hmm. continue to be like, it's a hundred million bajillion other people in this world. You For can sure. literally be with anybody in the world, but you're choosing this person. So you better, you better love them. You better respect them and you better have an understanding mm -hmm. as to what you both want out of life yeah and i think that's another thing my parents really were big on is like they really wanted a beautiful black ass life of excellence and love and joy and light and reality but yeah. but but building like they wanted to go somewhere they wanted to have a home they wanted to build dreams they wanted three kids in a house and my mom wanted five but you know two, there's too many kids. <laughs> you like they like, wanted enough. wanted yeah. and they also wanted to be able to excel in their careers so yeah. babysitters were real in our household honey we was always at somebody's house but yeah. 
it wasn't like I didn't see my parents. Like yeah. my mom, if if we were a baby, if we had a babysitter, my mom was the person that took us and picked us. Like it wasn't yeah, like a, yeah. wasn't like I never saw my mama. Like yeah. or I never saw my dad. Like my dad's very, uh, he's a journalist. I got that honest so like you know he was very big on like hey i have to cover this i'll be back dad loves you like calling whatever but they were also really sure that they wanted to do well in their careers too yeah but you have to have that conversation the with balance. your partner early on yes yeah. because again we had babysitters you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah, like you have to plan you have to plan it's a reason why i love the culture because i was watching <laughs> bt all the time just I, that was... I love that i, I think <laughs> about free. my family life was so different right yeah. like i didn't have that exact example in my household mm -hmm. but i saw it around my family mm -hmm. and i saw it with different people like my mom's friends some of them were married and they had relationships What's interesting, though, alternatively, we still winded up having the same desire, right, of like, I still, although I don't see it in my household consistently, like, I still want it. And yeah. so as I was growing up and becoming a young teenager, I remember that feeling of like, like you said earlier, like, I can't wait. I was like, I can't wait until yes. I can have a boyfriend. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that feeling? Yeah. And like, Jesus when Christ. was that? Was it middle school? Was it high school? Were you <laughs> boy crazed at all? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Big captain of the boy crazy committee. Um, <laughs> yeah, I all of a sudden like because I grew up a, a tomboy a little bit. Like okay. my mom Play didn't. Sports. Yeah, I loved basketball. I still love basketball. I played basketball up until eighth grade when I realized I was not growing, and there was just no <laughs> chance for me. I just didn't. I loved you know um, singing and dancing and all the other things more. So I was like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead yeah. hang up my jersey. But I think the biggest thing that I remember was being like 11 years old. And I, at this time, so we went to preschool at Tots, um, which is, which I don't know if it's still, open, which was a preschool that was just like four black children, very small. Mm -hmm. You, we were, I mean, taught by this beautiful woman named Miss Davenport and her family. And they pretty much just created like a curriculum for us. That So by the time we left there, we were already reading, speaking, right? Like I was teaching these little kids by the time I left, like, no, this is how you read. Like you're done. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> um, but anyway, that was all black. Mm -hmm. And then my mom moved us to a school from kindergarten to like eighth grade that was like all white. Okay. So when I was in sixth grade, I was around mostly white boys. Mm -hmm. And I was like, they don't like me. Like, mm -hmm. they don't even look at me. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure that not? was tough because at it, that time you want to fit in so badly. You, you want to be liked oh by everybody. God. I was a chameleon because also like the only thing I did at that point in my life um, with white people was school. Yeah, But my mother is a D.C. third generation Washingtonian. So like we was always in the city. My mom's dental office is behind Howard University. Like we never it was never a. Like I've never been to DC. Like every day yeah, we were DC. in DC. DC. Like it's not yeah. a thing. That's why I always say DMV and DC in Maryland because mm -hmm. my social life was all in DC, with the yeah, exception of, of PG with like some of my my friends and family. But um, our dance school was in DC. We went to um, Jones Haywood on off of Georgia Avenue. So like when I would go to DC. I would have to remember that I'm a black girl. Yeah. And then when I would go to school, I would have to fit in with the white girls. So, mm. like, I learned very early. I always talk like, yeah, like, I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like, no, like, that guy was totes weird. <laughs> totes. Hate it. Going to limited two later. Want anything? And, like, That's that crazy. girl. You had to learn the code And then when I was back young. in D.C., I danced. I was like, yeah, like, nah, he for real. Nah, Slim. He died He died, he he died, died wilding. Like, he that's crazy. He lunching, mo, for real. <laughs> Yeah, you heard that new TCB? No, nah, the thing. Nah, they was cranking for real, mo. Like, and and I learned one how much I love accents and impersonating people. Yeah. Yes, yes. I learned the power of my voice very young. I loved reading and all those things, but I also learned that like I never fit in. Mm. I still feel like that. I really? still feel like I don't really? fit in. Yeah, I never quite. But here's the thing: I think that's okay, and as yeah. an adult, you kind of yeah. don't always want to. Yeah, sometimes. But I it's do. tough. Sometimes <laughs> you do. I think I fight to fit in. Why do you feel like you don't fit in though? Like now, I guess. I'm just not. I'm not a cool kid. The lies. What do you mean by that? I am not cool. What do you like? I have cool, cool friends, right? Like some of my friends are like so cool. I'm just not a cool. I don't know. I'm just not a cool kid. You are the coolest. I am not cool. I am cool. I'm mean? not going to argue with you about it because I said what I said. Well, but maybe you are very on much that, a cool kid. Maybe it's a definition of cool. What are you defining as like cool? I think like, I guess. And this is something that I always have to talk myself down from. Yeah. Because I think it's even it's it's a 
it's the childhood trauma, right? Yeah. It's yeah. the when the greatest thing that ever happened to me was my siblings yeah. and is the defining trait of who I am to be the oldest. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Good and bad ways. Yeah. yeah. Meaning a lot of the times I would feel overlooked or dismissed or yeah. like, mm. and then, but on the other hand of that, I would be like, these are the greatest people ever. I have friends for everything, yeah. Yeah. but I would also sometimes feel alone. Yeah. So yeah. every community I enter into, if I'm not like, say there's a party and no one invites me. I'm like, oh, y'all wildin' as crazy. <laughs> I knew they didn't like me. Da, 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 da. But then it's like, no, it was our other friend who planned it. And I was like, oh, oh okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, y'all still don't like me. Like, that. y'all didn't tell. Like, so, like, yeah. it's just, it's it's a trauma that I act as an adult. I'm so embarrassed mm. to even admit that it's still yeah. there. Mm -hmm. But I say all that to say, like, the cool kids now that I see as cool kids are like the people who be like, yeah, I'm going to this great, I'm going to the Maxim mm -hmm. um, after party. Right. Mm. And you're like, ooh, that's, that's, <laughs> I'm going home. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to the restaurant to it. eat. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, With so my every own new level, yeah. there's a new cooler group. Yeah. yeah. So I just think that's, it's probably just my internal thing yeah but yeah i'm very sensitive to that i'm working through that though Got bless you. god for therapy but yeah. i just i just i'm not like i'm not like growing up i wasn't the kid that like smoked or drank before i was supposed to like i wasn't i was just i not, wasn't that kid either. yeah you know yeah, what i'm saying like i'm just not cool like i i'm i'm me i'm bomb like, don't get me for wrong sure I'm for sure grill, right period. yes just not cool. I wouldn't say I'm cool. You know but what I'm you saying? don't feel like you're seeking that either. Like oh, going no, out of your learned... way to like do things to try to get that attention. Right. Because no. I feel like that's where it unhealthy like manifests and people like out here trying to do things yeah. outside of their self to try to get attention just to be recognized as quote unquote cool. Oh you know? yeah. No, I accepted it. Yeah. I'm, I, I, like, <laughs> wait, I was, <laughs> I've come to terms I've come, with it. I'm like, yeah. oh, I'm not cool. cool. Like I, mm -hmm. I have my moments. Like I know yeah. Meek Mill, you know, like I know the things. <laughs> But like, <laughs> I know the thing. I know what people are doing, and I I say you know uh, I'm grateful because I don't have to be cool to mm -hmm. be who I am. No. I don't necessarily like being you know not invited, but that's everybody. Just, everybody's gonna have like a phone. It's a FOMO thing more than yeah, it yeah. is like yeah. a a personal. Um, a personal way for me to like belittle who I am. That's not it. That's not it at all. Gotcha. It's gotcha. like being cool is like it's almost like the fun, the funny thing. Like, oh, girl, you're not that cool. Like, I'm just not that. <laughs> you gotcha. like the quirky one, right? I'm yeah. more quirky and corny mm -hmm. than I am cool. Like, Got I it. will give you a dad joke and laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, <laughs> like, that was hilarious, bro. Like, yo, that was a go of my dude. I love dad jokes. Yeah. yeah, I also love Dave Chappelle's jokes. As well. So, you know, it just depends on like you know what the environment it is. yeah situation. but i'm just not really like i wouldn't consider myself like the coolest kid on the block got you and it's never at a point to where you if somebody offered you something or somebody was interested in you you would feel like undeserving of that mm -mm. in any way no okay. um if i i also work very hard yeah. yeah so like if i'm getting something it's because I've earned it. You've earned it. I really put in my 10,000 plus hours at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm never shy on that. Yeah. I just meant like my personality. Mm -hmm. Got you. It's just, it's just more quirky. Cool. Yeah. Corny than a. Yeah. No, I, like I, I'm, I it's that. like Rihanna. Like I'm not Rihanna. Got it. Like Rihanna's like without even <laughs> opening her mouth. Yes. You just feel like she's just like. Cool cool bro and yeah. she's like that in person like when really? i met her i was like you're literally so cool so like <laughs> but this is me right like i'm like oh my god like you're rihanna and, then, <laughs> and she's like i know like yeah. it's nothing right yeah. but yeah so I, that's what i meant my gotcha. personality isn't like but it makes sense i mean when you talked about middle school and you talked about the the people you were around mm -hmm. and and you know no shade because we obviously have listeners and supporters from all different walks of life mm -hmm. but when you are trying to show up as a black girl there's almost this inherent understanding that we are cool yeah. and be clear i think as a culture we are right mm -hmm. like we we have the vibes on lock yes. you know we have swag on lock we got rhythm on lock yeah. sure. but the truth is that's not we're not a monolith yes. and everyone isn't super yeah. cool so i understand it because you were in a, a daily environment, although yes, going to DC for this and, and at home in a very black environment. But 
you still were exposed to people that aren't necessarily always considered the coolest. You almost expect them to be cheesy or corny. And so then I think about like approaching dating because I don't know if you, you know, if, if you were hard set that I want to be with a black man, you know, I want to date a black (laughs) <laughs> as, as, as as young as you could remember, it was like although I see all these white boys, I still I, mean, want... I had my little crushes on the um instincts and stuff. And uh-huh. There was a couple of them in my class that I still, you know, I mean, yeah. it was cute. Yeah, yeah. Not, but you I'm ultimately fine. like want your somebody in your community. Oh, in so my then life. trying to be cool is like, whew, okay, I'm just trying to be cute first of all, and then trying to be cool is like a whole nother layer. And yeah. you know what's interesting? And before we get to that answer. Mm-hmm. I have always have proximity to the cool kids. Like I'm mm. always cool a Jace. Okay. Okay. Cool like I, Jace. all my friends are cool. Shit. Like they are the coolest kids ever. Like I'll be looking at someone like, you so lit. Like period. Sis. What are we doing <laughs> later? Like you getting us in though. I'm your plus one. Right. right. Like, like, right, right, right. <laughs> I don't have the finesse to get us right. through the door. Right. Like yeah. I'm right. Like I'm just not that. Yeah, like, yeah. so I think, um, I think, I think that's it. I'm okay with that. I'm okay mm. with wherever God has me, honestly, because sure. yeah. I believe that he knows what he's doing and it's fine. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's just funny. And then as far as dating and approaching dating, yes, I would love to marry and date and create a family with a black, black man. man. Yeah. yeah. I would love that. However, pause. That's You're what it felt like. You're not yourself to I that. can't anymore. Yeah. Living yeah. in LA, <laughs> you will quite literally be like, What? what? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah. I feel like I hear that from women everywhere, though. No matter really? where the location is, that it's just is hard that in the DMV. I mean, Rhonda. Oh God! So I, tr- so you know me. I try to <laughs> be so positive and That's optimistic about the dating landscape. And so when I hear people say like, oh, it's pee in the dating pool and things like that. Like, can I say without a shadow of a doubt? Yes, it can be very challenging. But I will say that I think they're great candidates everywhere, That's what I'm you know, and I, and I can only date within proximity. Right. So I live in Baltimore. I, I party and hang out and do what I do in the DMV. And I think to some degree, it's just a matter of like putting yourself out there and and just learning people, right? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, I might meet someone. And if I let those first five minutes be everything, yes, yeah, sometimes I could be like, oh, Jesus, okay. But I also grace. have to, re- I have to give grace. And I have to realize that maybe I just need to explore this conversation a little further. Maybe he's, I mean, if he's disrespectful, that's different. If that first impression is just horrible. Yeah. But Sometimes it is okay. He's not as tall as I would like him to yeah, be, right but I gotta. Now. I'm gonna push through that. Mm-hmm. Or that first conversation, maybe he is awkward, but it could be because he's nervous. Oh, honey, right? Yeah. Like I have to sometimes go past that. So yes, y'all know you watch the show. It can be a struggle, but there's <laughs> also just some wins. Like every man that I meet may not be a potential suitor. Maybe they're like gonna be a homeboy, yeah. or and I a can friend of your future suitor. Yes, exact, awesome. exactly. You know, you just don't know. So I do think it's tough everywhere, but I have no clue. Like being in LA, whew. it's just um, like what is your I biggest al- struggle there? I think LA is interesting because there's like Hollywood LA, and then there's like. Inglewood, Slauson, Crenshaw, LA, yeah. where they love black women. They yeah. mm-hmm. they love black, they are black. They yeah. are black people there. Yeah. It's a black yeah. community. Lamert Park, all those, you know, beautiful places that we, you know, know about. Yeah. Where, you know, Nipsey's from, you know, Crenshaw, like all those things. Where Janae yeah. Eichel's from. Yeah. Like, where it's like real black people. It's real black, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, because a lot of the things I do are work-based, it's going to be more Hollywood than not. Mm-hmm. So it's it's also me putting myself in those more black environments yeah. where it's like these are the people that love black women. I think something happens. Um, I don't know what it is. But also when you're in L.A. for a while, like there's a different level of perfect that these women look like like they are like oh you go to the gym every day you don't eat anything like <laughs> right. you are you are perfection like yeah. you shake like everybody is bomb like mm-hmm. you're like oh my god you're really that pretty in person like that's not photoshop like oh my god like real life like gorgeous yeah um so i i, I don't know i i have i would honestly i would love to ask a black man who did move from somewhere else who's now dating a white woman what happened Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> it was the pause. What? What? 
happen. You know, happen to like to, hot- to and maybe they just don't close off their options. I yeah. think that's what it is. Right. I went to a PWI and I dated a white woman before. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I wasn't necessarily did I think it would be like to a point to where we would meet each other's parents and stuff like that? No, but we were exclusive and it was cool and it was fun and it was more just like proximity proximity Mm -hmm. but also just being open like i liked her she liked me we had a good time together and just kind of roll with it Mm -hmm. but i started to realize as we got deeper that there was a lot of cultural differences you know um like and it's hard to relate on certain things like i didn't grow up on the beatles like and you don't know who boys the men is or are you know what i mean it's like i hate that for you yeah it's oh i'm I'm i mean i know you good now i'm good now i know you good now but it's just like (laughs) i think have being someone who has dated, you know, somebody who is white, that it was just more just being open versus like a choice to be like, I'm dating this only. I knew teammates who did. I had teammates who were black who said, I don't like black women. I only like white women. And I'm just like, your mama's black. Like, what, what in that the part, world? That like, this, your auntie, your grandma, your like, sister, this don't make sense. Cousins, yeah, everybody. Your old best friends. And mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to them or what went on for them to have that mindset but because something probably went on my issue is why is it so easy to throw away like all black women instead of just saying i had one bad experience with one black woman and now i'm i'm gonna keep my eye open for these red flags instead of just being like oh just throwing away a whole race women in general can be absolutely emotional crazy women women just in general women in general very true Y'all getting swept up in this white supremacist society. Yeah. <laughs> if y'all think it's just us, like y'all getting y'all mm-hmm. feeding into the stereotypes that they put out into Absolutely. the world about sure. black women. If you just all of a sudden sweep us mm-hmm. all under one rug, yes, yeah. we all might be, you know, uh, ready to to go to bat for what we believe in. Mm-hmm. But we're not all going to come out in this come at it in the same way. We're yeah. not all slashing tires. Like nope. we're not all keying cars. We're not all throwing brooks in windows. In and fact, then, some of us aren't at all. And then also, I've never like, done ever, that. like ever. Yeah, I've I never did think that. about it. No, I have. I have done some stuff now, but you know what I'm saying? Never bricks, and I have so. friends. Never bricks. Never but I was bricks. gonna say that also there are things on the opposite side that if you wanted to stereotype black men about, you easily could too. Yeah, so it's, it's and like, it's not productive. It's not. It's it's it, not. It's literally buying into like it'd be it'd be the most woke black man with a white girl i'd be like bro what you doing like (laughs) sometimes those are the ones that but not all of them but but i do think um in la i just think yeah maybe they're just being open but it it does it is um downright terrifying when black men say i do not like black women i will not date black women yeah it is it is terrifying i'd be like what why what What happened happened to you yeah. No, it's 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 very I will never say I won't like you, you know, getting older. It you start to you have to peel back <laughs> realistically the list. The you know? the whole, and yeah, I never had this really yeah, right. I never had this crazy <laughs> long list, right? Yeah. I never did. But do you feel also like you said now you can't. You're like I can't. I can't shut off um, men that are not black. Are there other things where you're like, like maybe not having a kid or like, oh yeah, but what if you divorce? I don't know. Different yeah, things. Yeah, like right. You, yeah, like all have you... of it is. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't. I wouldn't prefer either of those situations. But yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm someone's second wife at this point. Like, I yeah. hate it for me, but I mean, <laughs> it might, it might be true. I, I, um, yeah. I, my list was never crazy either. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I never had to type. Like I've dated all types of black men. Okay. Every six feet, six, four, five, eight. Like it, the the finest man you ever seen. And And, uh, (laughs) a squinter, a squinter. Nice. He's got a great personality. (laughs) Sweet man. That's a sweet, that's a good man. That's a good man, Savannah. Yes, he is. He's a, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all types of black men. Right. And um it's usually just like, you know, their their heart or their spirit or, you know, how they make me feel in that moment, how we make each other feel. Yeah. Are they good at communicating? Yeah. Are they honest? Are they fun? Are they happy with their lives? And mm-hmm. are they not intimidated by me or what I do or what they think I am? Are they willing to give me a chance to know that I am a full human being? You mm-hmm. get 10% of who I am on my socials when I'm working, when I'm interviewing. That is me for um, a minute. 
Yeah. Quite literally. Yeah. Me as a whole human being, I'm a mess some days. I'm great some days. <laughs> yeah. I'm loving some days. I'm angry some days. I need my recharging moment some days. I want to be clingy some day. I am a full human oh, full experience. Sure. And, um, you know, it, 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 it makes it harder to want to date when people only ever want to put you mm. in this bucket. This mm. And they're just like, no, you're Gia Peppers. You must be this. And I'm like, mm-hmm. I was born Gia Peppers. That's what you got to remember. The yeah. Gia Peppers, the... The Gia Peppers? Right. <laughs> but I, she's a whole person. I'm a For whole sure. human being. I've been Gia Peppers since I was born. I'm going to be Gia Peppers when I die. It's not a fake name. I mean, maybe it, I might you know, have a hyphenation. But like, <laughs> it's not... It's not... I can't separate who I am right. in the public eye and who I am behind closed doors. Sometimes I just be like, all right, you know, Gigi, like I'm Gigi today. Gigi is like, my parents call me Gigi, my mm, okay. brother and sister, like that's just my nickname. So yeah. like family calls me Gigi, like that's just, you know, even though my nickname is longer than my real name. So, <laughs> you know, it's just, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, I love it when men understand that social media and all the things is just an aspect that's, of my job. It's yeah. not who, you who are. I am. Yeah. That's the illest type of man. And usually the men I've dated or taken seriously have given me an opportunity to be my full self. Yeah. And I want to talk about dating, especially in your industry. Yeah. Because I've been super curious about that. Yeah. I heard you talk about one time a season for in your life you were traveling from New York. DC, DC, New York, DC, mm-hmm. like sometimes in like a 24 hour period going mm-hmm. back and forth. And then when I look at some journalists, like I consume a lot of sports and then I know some people. So I see people like Monica McNutt and like, wow. uh, like Malika <laughs> Andrews and I see how much they're on TV. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, when do you have time to actually date somebody in this space? Like, I feel like you have so much going on, so many things you're trying to chase. And it seems like if you want to, you know, elevate in your career, especially as a journalist, you have to take opportunities as they come and when they come. So in your like in your space of journalism and hosting and things like that, how do you find time to even date anybody during that time or have something consistent? Or do you feel like you got to date somebody in that industry that understands like your life? We working on it. I have <laughs> no idea because to, I I'm have so not about been it. dating. Like yeah. if I'm being completely and totally honest, um, I was talking to Morgan Devon, mm-hmm. the um, you know, a founder, mm-hmm. CEO of Blavity, Blavity yeah. and we were having like a real conversation about it. And she was like, gee, you 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 might gotta, you know, sit down for a second. Like, um, Morgan, if you've been following her lately, she moved to Nashville, she like settled down, she's closer with the family, she's pregnant now, mm-hmm. she has a partner, and she chose her life. Like mm-hmm. she was like, I have all this great career stuff, but I want a family. Yeah. What are the things I need to do to realistically create that in my life, create that space? It sucks because as a journalist, if I start a brand, that's one thing when I start a brand. But as a journalist, yeah, you don't always have the luxury to be like, no, I'm just going to go home yeah. now or go to a smaller city and just like put your feet down now. I don't know. I, w- I would love to know like how a Doris Burke does it or like how the pe- women who have been doing it forever do it. Um, I know that my friends who do have successful relationships have met these men in random things and they just, again, understand that they are a full person and are just like, babe, I understand. They just have to be super understanding, understanding sure. and they have to be super secure because if you, if you, you know, face to face with, um, Jalen Rose, like they have to be secure, secure enough right to out. be like, yeah, that's what's up. I was interviewed. Yeah. 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 Instead of being like, you know, you hit the group chat, like, ooh, he's fine, he smell good. Like, <laughs> but like, you know, like, <laughs> you gotta be secure yeah. in that. So I think the biggest thing for me now is honestly um, being more honest with myself about the willingness and the intention I am mm. ready to have around dating. Yeah. And also I'm balancing out this, like, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Am I supposed to be working so hard to find a man? Step up and find me. Like, what is you doing? <laughs> right, so, like, right. I I don't know. I'm praying on it because, like, 
it is a thing where like I talk to my pastors about it and they're like, let him find you. I'm like, but he ain't coming. Like, I think he lost. I think he's lost. <laughs> he is he, he's using ways or Google and, Maps pass to tell me what is he using what is to he get using? here? <laughs> because I also feel like we live in a time where men just some men don't have to work. As hard. As hard. It's, no, it's true. true. The numbers the numbers support that. That the the tide has changed and, and men are certainly outnumbering um women. I mean women are outnumbering men. men. Yeah. And so they do have more of the pick of the litter. Yes. More of us are single than them. And then when you think about the smaller uh compartments of it of like, yes, there are lots of men, but then which ones do you want to date? And like, what are what are they doing with their lives? Not just income earning, but just like, what are they like? You said, is he happy with himself? Yeah. Is he working on himself? Is he the right age that I'm okay with? Does he have a kid or does he have eight? Mm. You know, you when you start to really cut down all the things, it's like, okay, yeah. yes, yes, they 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 are outnumbering. Uh, we're outnumbering them, and they do have more choice, and they have more more. Like we have ambition too now, right? Mm -hmm. Where like in the Bible, we wasn't even allowed the child do anything. Nothing. Like, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yeah, because we was in the house. You had to literally come find. Like we literally <laughs> were barely allowed to be out in the streets. Women yeah. were, you know, they wouldn't even talk about black women child. I mean, I don't, who knows? What? I don't know. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, um, it is something that is, it, it, this keeps me in prayer. Yeah. Like this part of my life um, because I do want it. And I am praying on like, do I need to move back home? Do I need to buy a house? Do I need to settle down? Do I need to start saying no to certain things? Do I need to, not that I can't have my career, but does it need to look different? Do I not need to be at every single, you know, yeah. beck and call of a red carpet? Do mm -hmm. I need to be like, nah, I'm trying to do this. Do bills need to be paid? Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, things are always, uh, that's what I'm praying on now. But I also know that I have a huge heart and I, you know, love, love, mm -hmm. and I love family, and I can't yeah. wait to have children. I can because it's a lot, but I can't <laughs> wait to have children, yeah, and I can't looking wait. Forward to it. Right, I'm looking forward to it. And so, yeah, I do. It is hard, but my friends who have successful relationships in this industry definitely have very understanding men who are very confident and usually are somewhat busy, somewhat busy doing the work of doing their life, too. Doing. So, yeah. like, some of my friends' boyfriends are also... You know, while they might not be hosts, they might be actors or producers or they mm -hmm. might be going for their doctorate. Like they're doing something that takes so much time away yep. that like they're going to be like, babe, I can't come to that. Like, you know, yes. they have yes. stuff yeah. to do, yes. too. Right. So it has to be someone who is um, doing something with their life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we yeah. love a man that's busy about something. Just do something. Because yeah. if not, you're going to be upset. Yeah. yeah. And I think security, like you said, is a big thing, especially in the space that you're in. Yeah. A man who is secure in himself and is okay with you doing what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And understanding that this is a job. It's a call. Yeah. yeah. Um, It is not necessarily something that you get to control who is in these rooms or who you do interviews with. Yeah. Like you can, they can give you a tip sheet for the red carpet, but if Idris Elba comes through, cause he feels like it, Ooh. me and Idris going to talk. Yes, we are. <laughs> Y'all got to be all yes, right. With we that. Are. Now his wife, Sabrina probably going to be there and giving, <laughs> giving looks, all the things, giving all the man. things. <laughs> Ooh. But still, I hope you're not upset if you see me in a selfie with Idris because yeah. we was just working. That's all. That's mm -hmm. it. That's it. No, for sure. You you um you talked about spirituality yeah. and and anyone again that's paying attention to you knows how important that is in yeah. your life. Yeah, that you're praying for these things and praying for clarity. Yeah. How has you know your spirituality, specifically Christianity, guided your decision making around dating, and how important is that in the man that you're looking for? You know. Christianity has helped me not lose my faith has helped me not lose hope in love mm -hmm. because I don't know what I would do if I didn't have prayer time with God and this like it would just look real bleak out here I would just yeah. be like no I'm supposed to be alone this is what it is mm -hmm. but God keeps you know putting it in my heart that like no I gave you the capacity of love I'm 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 bringing this person into your life we're figuring it out like you know I I pray for my future mate yeah. I pray that he has a great day. I pray that he's good. I pray mm. that whatever is bothering him, he finds peace. I pray for him already. My One of my best friends told me, like, pray for him. And I was just like, sound crazy, Lord, but okay. <laughs> hope he's doing well. I don't know who he yeah. is, but I know that when I meet him, you know, I hope I have the discernment 
that yeah. he is the person for me. Uh, and so it it do, it it definitely helps me in, in guiding me to keep me believing in love for me, despite all of the statistics and my job and the things I do and men being intimidated by me and all the things. I'm like, all right, Lord, when I when it comes down to it, you told me the promise is there. Like I have a husband mm -hmm. some well. Well, I don't know, <laughs> but I hope he's having a good day. And I hope he knows that there is someone praying for him. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to a man who is a believer, I I prefer him to be a believer. Mm -hmm. um, I would prefer that he ready to go to church because I can't. Oh, I can't wait to look good. My man just be like, hallelujah. <laughs> Wasn't that good? <laughs> Boy, good up there. I, mean, I, keep going past. I can't wait. To have church with your man. What? Yeah. We yeah. outside. We praying. We praying over food. We praying over everything. <laughs> we it. just praying. Baby, you got a, you got a, a, a deal. Okay, let's pray about it. Because, you know, like, I can't wait. Um, I think spirituality is, is, is another form of intimacy. It yeah. is. Um, yeah. So, if he's not, he going to be by the time we done. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> you going to have to love you the Lord if you going to be of, over here. You, you going to be in church. Like, yeah. you know, and, and, and again, like, if it's, if it's like a, He's got to be some type of incredible for me to not want that. Yeah, he's got to be like everything else is right, but he just doesn't like church. Yeah, mm. and if we're separate in that, I just don't know that that's sustainable because I also am of the belief that like we, God is in our relationship. Yeah, so like I want a a, a man who believes in God because even if he messes up or if he even he can't stand me in a moment, mm -hmm. he goes to God. Like yeah, he, yeah. who yeah. he responds to yes. is bigger than for sure. Us. That's Dre. That's Dre. Yeah, I mean, I grew up completely like in the church yeah. all the time. I went to Riverdale Baptist. Come on, Riverdale the, Baptist. I did, I did. Oh wait, do you know Alex Armstrong? Alex, that name sound. Oh, is it a girl, Alex? Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh, Alex. Alex. Yeah, yeah. one of my girls. We're at Sage House together. <laughs> um, but I grew up at Riverdale Baptist. I'm memorizing Bible verses right. as I grow up. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in the AME Church, so church school conferences. My mm -hmm. grandmother was a superintendent. My mom's an elder. Like, yeah. I grew up in church, and that was my background. And really, my relationship decision or my relationship journey was really a faith based one. Like, exactly. I waited for marriage. I chose to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, and me and my wife waited for three years before wow. we got married and that was all because I felt like whenever I did things the way God said to do it it turned out better for me mm. um but then with all that being said like when it came to church sometimes I was always I still have this weird relationship with actually going and attending sometimes mm -hmm. just because of the way I grew up and how ritualistic it was and the certain things I've seen and I still have my relationship with God yeah. um but it's just going sometimes yeah. so I know you said like if he has to want to go to church or he could have everything else right. But if he doesn't go to church, then it'll have to be hard. But what if he still has that relationship? As long as, as we can pray as, together, okay, that's the thing. You. Like, I mean, it's going to be, it'll be weird, right? Like if I'm a married woman and my husband isn't with me like once a month, like he can go once. If you can go once a month, please. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on the day where we need communion. So yeah, because sure. like, communion is still like, you know, for me, I always try to go, especially, uh, I try to go every week, but if I'm on the road or somewhere, like I'm, you know, getting a cracker and water in my room and watching bedside bath, like it's it's important for me to 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 have that. But I do think I can I can as long as he has a relationship with God that he really stands on, like that's yeah, his yeah. firm foundation. Firm, you know, shout to Maverick City. I think <laughs> that that's better than anything that I could ask for. Yeah. And maybe one day he will feel comfortable. Like I also think church homes are, are, uh, are reflective of where you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't at this like certain place, there might be another place that is more reflective of where you true. are right now. So yeah. um, I'm also open to like trying different places that both of us might like, yeah. like, you know, like I love Zion and shout out to, past a battle i love zion and greenbelt because zion church in greenbelt is super open and super mm -hmm. relaxed and super chill and pastor battle still going to give you a great word and even first baptist of glen arden like it's overwhelmingly big yeah. Yeah. but i've been to the the potter's house so you know <laughs> right. the, 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 the church is gonna that's be the big, the big, big yeah. that, that, that's the biggest of the big For right sure. other than joel's i ain't never been there but i think that i'm Drove fine past it. yeah that's about it yeah no, I don't, i'm good i don't want to go but i do think <laughs> I don't want to know. Ain't no wrong with you. Oh, well, I'm going to stay over here. But I do <laughs> think that there is a um, a certain 
thing that happens when you find a good space that both of y'all feel fed in. For sure. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I definitely think it's one of the things I, I look forward to if it doesn't happen. Immediately, I still think maybe it will happen over time because yeah. I'm going to naturally be interested in what my husband wants to do. Like if he wanted to teach me how to golf, I'm there. What's what's up? Right. Yeah. I got to watch football. All right. Show me what's good because I'm not a football <laughs> Explain fan. Explain it to me a little bit. I know like touchdown and like first down, <laughs> second down, third down, fourth down. Like, I, know, I know like I know, touchdown. And I know the things like a flag on a play. Like we move. But like, uh, you know, I won't know like, oh, that was a that was a bad. I don't know. Yeah. Teach right. me about that because, yeah. you know, like if that's your favorite. If you like soccer. Good God, I'm going to have to figure out how to like soccer. For sure. Yeah. So, like, I'm naturally interested in going to church. I would hope that my husband is, like, at least trying it. If he yeah. hates it and feels uncomfortable, then I got to No, I, I get what you're saying because that happened with me when I went to college. Yeah. Like, I grew up in this ritualistic, and me is very ritualistic, reciting things before everything. Mm-hmm. But then when I got to college, I was like, oh, I've never been to a church where there are no bulletins. And, like, just walk in, they praise and worship, and it's just, like, straight to the word. And it's like, oh, I like that. Yeah. I was like, it just feels more, I could relate to the pastor. It just felt more natural. Um, but I also wonder when it comes to, like, because I know that people were hard on me and my wife, like, for living together while we were waiting for marriage. and oh, like, they were? They were. They used to tear us up about it. And I'm just like. And this was at the AME church? No, this is just online. Like, just church, what, church just folk. Just church folk, just in general. Like, when my wife and I launched our brands and said we were waiting for marriage, but we chose to live together, um, we were getting, like, bash from people especially in the christian community and my wife was kind of new in that space and she was like this is how people Ooh, treat folks dang, yeah. but i wonder like when it comes to you do you think are you that rigid and like oh i won't live with my person before marriage or i'm waiting this <laughs> <laughs> it's the face the face is answering you are the listening question. you can't yeah, see, can her see her face, her right face. Now. <laughs> i'm not rigid and i would never judge like another human being right and i would never that is who is it's, it's you know tough be, because like, on with, you know with, you yeah know, man yeah. it's tough online like no matter ugh, online is unfortunately the greatest place to create community and find people mm-hmm. it is also the easiest place to find the belly of the beast of every single type of factor of Being human discussion. online yeah. oh it my. doesn't matter <laughs> you can find the worst representation of every walk of life Very on there true. and the best Very right yeah. um I find it hard to belittle another human being as if I don't understand what being a human is. Mm. I find it hard to harm another human being who is just trying to do their absolute best. Yes, yeah. And um, I rarely get into those like arguments online. Like I, if you notice, I'm not going to go in and read everybody just because they made a mistake. It's a, if it's a pattern, I might say something like, it was wrong with your brother, you got to get that together. But if you are, if this is what you believe you need to do in your heart, that's crazy. God said, love one another as I have loved you. Hmm. What does that have to do with us harming another human being and bringing them down on a decision? Like, it's just, it's, I know that people pick and choose what to do in Christianity. I know that someone could literally be like, well, in the Bible, it literally also says, thou shalt not live, like whatever. But as far as me, me, I don't believe in harming other human beings. Now, also, don't be surprised if y'all don't find no pictures of me and my man (laughs) until (laughs) I'm engaged. (laughs) I I love that Issa posted the... We were just just talking talking about about this. I love that Issa soft launched a wedding. Soft launched. And said, oh, this is a photo shoot in Italy. Had a great time. Even the post was like, is it? Is she married? I thought it was genius. Yes. And... I remember seeing her at red carpets and she had the ring on and we were like, I said this. I was like, I think we all just thought it was costume jewelry or not. No, nope. she just wouldn't speak on it. She just wouldn't she say just was like, hmm. This film that I'm doing though is great. And yeah. she was like, ah, ha, ha, the film. Yeah. Mm. The show. And the thing. So you have questions. So I think about- it's also like all my friends who do have this job and are in great relationships have some level of protection over their relationship as well. Yeah. There is one girl I know who is a whole fiancéed woman and nobody knows about it. And I wow. love it because, <laughs> again, it's yeah. not Charles' business. For sure. And it does bring a whole nother level of noise that can internally affect you. Yeah. But I say all that to say it's every couple's decision. So if For my sure. man is the type like, I need to be on your page now, we're going to have to talk about it. We're going we're gonna to figure it out. Because, like, I, you know, if, if, until we engage, 
I don't know. But either way, <laughs> I just want to, you know, I, I just want to be protective of my man because yeah, yeah. this this world is loud and crazy and not everybody needs to be there. So you consume social media. You're on there. You're, you're there for work. And yes. I know you see all of the craziness that sometimes happens. Like when you're talking about love and relationships yeah. and dating. Yeah. What is like some of the stuff that makes you just cringe? On the socials? On the socials. Mm. Topics, debates. Is it anything that makes you like, oh, God, is this really what's happening out here right um, now? Um, um, Krishan and blue face. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um. <sighs> I was, yes. <laughs> so immediately, yes. But somebody out there, a lot of people out there, for some reason, love it. That's people love why, them. That, it just makes I, me cringe. I yeah. just me is me yeah, in my house. I don't get it though. That's what I'm saying. I don't either. I, and and I love that are. people like it. And you know what? I also realize there's a whole new generation of people, people on the like internet. It. Yes. That like, I was on TikTok the other day, and they hadn't seen um, the the behind the scenes of like. God, what was I watching? It was like an access granted of like Destiny's Child. And I was like, wow, these kids have no idea what access granted is. is. So yeah. I realized there's a whole new faction of yeah. young people on the internet that are very loud and have opinions. And yeah. they were like us when AOL started, right? Like it's, it's, we were just outside on AIM, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. But they have no idea what we're talking yeah. about. And yeah. they also have new people that they care about and yeah. they're in their drama and stuff like that. So I think that that's, you know, they're, they're, they're people, their drama, but I, it makes me cringe because I just, wa I'm watching like two really young people try to figure it out in mm -hmm. like a really loud space. Yeah. And so it is just, I just don't want to know. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. I don't need to know everything, but everything's on social media. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. um, that makes me cringe. Uh, as far as like relationships, um, when guys and women or whoever, when people screenshot, DMs mm. to try to they expose be like, like private things. Yeah, to try to be like, I look who in my DMs, like things like that. It's so weird. It's corny. Mm. It's weird. It's like it, it scares me. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, dang, he fine. I'm scared like, to slide his DMs. Because it's one thing. To, I mean, nine times out of ten, at this point, we know it's going to end up in somebody's group chat. Like, it's for sure, somebody maybe yeah. not a group chat, but at least a text to a best friend. Like, dang, yeah, like, yeah. oh, she pulling up, duh, 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 and I hate that. Oh, it makes me cringe. <laughs> I've never slid in a man's DMs before. I've never, never, ever. never in I my have slid black in a DM life. You. Have, and you wouldn't. You never wanted to. Wanted to absolutely. But you just like. Ah think myself out of it every time i'm mm. like i can't he bought not even like a, a like a little because dre always says like you just got to set the play just up the, for for the man you mean like a, um the um just like a, emoji things yeah yeah i've done the emoji things okay yeah. like, response to a story yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. okay okay never but worked. never like hey how are you <laughs> so i just stopped doing it never worked <laughs> I think I had like two three in me and i was like <laughs> just say scene 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 or is hey, it like lol 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 <laughs> I was not joking, Mr. I Sir. Was, I was, the, you were supposed to, what, I teed it up. You were supposed to be like, girl, what? That's crazy. What's your number? Let me text you about it. Something. I don't know. Not LOL, LOL. LOL, ha. <laughs> the long A's. Ha. Not the ha. Ha. They got me. Yeah. Uh, Damn. Dang. That's why, also, that's why I'm not a shooter, because they never work. I mean, mm. with the open three and just airball. Dang. Damn. I'm not a shooter. I have stop, no game. Y'all slotted my girl DM and stop playing. Please, yeah. I, it's not, and I love all the young women who are looking for advice. And, like, that's all that's in my DMs. It's like, I love what you do. I'm an up and coming journalist. And I just, and I'm like, dang, I was hoping you was a dude. Like, <laughs> I want to take <laughs> me on a, a new DM notification. It's like, ah. Do you, uh, hey, sweetheart, hey, do heart. you have a brother? <laughs> um, perhaps we can meet over. I can't. You <laughs> imagine, though. That's that abuse of power. No, ma'am. I, I love, I always be like, <laughs> just email we'll you know get a coffee going but like it's 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 tough when you're yeah. like really wanting it really real yeah. life single yeah. like yeah real life single yeah real life single mm -hmm. i get mm -hmm. it i understand mm -hmm. it it can be it can be a lot on some days yeah. but those are days like you said you pour into yourself you affirm yourself you remind yourself and you lock into those prayers mm -hmm. or that, i get really sad there's also yes, days where I you just, just you just cry. You like man, watch things mm. to remind myself of just other people's problems. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm gonna watch Love Is Blind because at least <laughs> <laughs> I can watch somebody else. Because at least I'm gonna look at somebody that yeah. has no idea what's going on as well. Let me yeah. just turn on, like you know, like sometimes I really just don't have the fight, and I'll just be sad, and I allow myself to be sad because I think it's also fair to feel your feelings, For and sure. I think you know if you hold it in, it'll come out somewhere else.
Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, well, some feeling. days I just be sad. We get it. Sure. Hearts. Well, <laughs> feeling your feelings matters. But it you does. know what helps with that? Music. It does. Music helps with that. Yeah. So what are you listening to these days? What what is the soundtrack to your love life today? The soundtrack you had to, to pick a song or two. To my love life today is very aspirational. Okay. You know, so I'm like preparing my heart. For a long time, I, I, when I was like working so hard, like you just, I was only listening to gospel because like that's all you have time for in the morning. You get your worship, praise and worship playlist. And then you're like, all right, I got to go to work. So you're not Mm -hmm. even like listening to like, you know, things. And then, you know, for us, we got to do a lot of research. So I'm always listening to interviews or like, for me, this week I've been on an Arsenio Hall binge, like just watching all these old 90s interviews, like Michael Jordan's first interview on, like just, I just, for me, I am a, student of culture I love culture and as I'm doing research for other things or just even getting inspiration or understanding why certain things were phenomena is like as I build my own things it's just really important for me so I am always working so I have to make an effort to be like tonight we're listening to love songs Mm. tonight we're turning on you know uh, Amory radio like tonight we're sitting down and we are doing real life like love work because one thing that I also realized and I'm sure I'm not alone in this is that if nobody demands that part of you you feel like you forget how to even date and how to even feel like a romantic, sexy woman. Like there's been so many times where I've been out and like, I don't give that energy because nobody demands it from me. Nobody makes me feel like a, a woman. Yeah, like they, I'm always the home girl, always the well revered, barely highly sought after host. I'm always the journalist who's gonna ask great questions. I'm always the the big sister who's mm-hmm. looking out. But when I, whew, I used when to love to growing up like- in the DMV because you walk down the street, they like, whoa, you like, what's up? And you did like mm-hmm. I in the clubs, like they're not afraid to like at least you know. Do the arm grab. Like, uh, <laughs> what are you saying? Like <laughs> in LA, they like. <laughs> like so you know you yeah so the that is me preparing my energy again to feel mm. like that mm. so it is aspirational i listen to a lot of common the light because that's what i want my love Ooh. my my man to feel like about me i listen mm-hmm. to as a lot so i can prepare myself for the the time where i will feel like that i yeah. listen to you know spend my life by eric and tamia i listen to Ooh, that's um a good a, song. A, mm. a that's love. the official wedding song nothing I cannot- even matters lauren and d'angelo Ooh. i listen to like love songs mm. so i can remind into- myself mm. of a time where my energy was loved and loving so mm-hmm. I can almost like call that back into my my being because yeah. I once we work so hard, yeah. you almost become that. Yes. And so if nobody's demanding that of me, I got to demand it of myself. Cause, you do. Because yeah. at least I got to remember that she though. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like, and so, yeah, that's what my love playlist has been looking like lately. That's so good. That's, it's you, crazy how music can take you back to a place. Yeah, it is. Make it you is. Recall it's beautiful. Something. That's so like it's magical almost. that's why music matters so much yes, like if you don't listen to it mm-hmm. you won't even re- it, it, it helps you emote it helps you feel it, it helps you think through like hard things great things beautiful mm-hmm. things annoying things like there's a song for everything for, for sure. everything and we love that truly we do. We um do. and yeah so for me i definitely been listening to a, a lot of that i think as far as like you know for work i, I host the r&b station so i'm always listening to new things yeah. and um you know janelle's project the age of pleasure is incredible it's it's a different part of the psyche that i really get to tap into because you know i'm a straight cis cis woman but like i think it's so cool to watch janelle like demand that her life look and feel pleasurable yeah and i and i and i can i can relate to that because i'm just like yeah like where pleasure is something i rarely ask for out of life Mm -hmm. like it's just pleasure for me is um you know, right, directly, directly yes. related to sex, right? Yeah. You can get pleasure out of other things, but just that's just in my yeah. mind, that's yeah. what I always see. But because I just haven't been with anybody in a while and even felt that like drawn to be with somebody in a, in like a while, just I haven't liked somebody like that in a while. Mm-hmm. I haven't 
thought about pleasure. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, Janelle, like, tell us what the girls is doing. Mm-hmm. Period. It, it's fire. I went to her album release or listening to here in DC. Yeah. And one first, that was one of the first album releases that like I've seen the artist be up really the whole time, like dancing, dancing with the crowd. Like she was having a blast. Janelle and I was like, best. and it matched the music. Mm-hmm. She's the best. She was having fun. She's literally in her age of pleasure. Like there's yeah. no there I is love it. no um there is nothing here She's just that unashamed. Is fake. Right. Yeah. Just, She's here. Yep. I'm That's here. her age. And we all coming with her. If you listen to the album or go to the listenings or mm-hmm. go to her concerts, I'm sure they're gonna be insane. Like yeah. sure. you know, so I think that's uh super it's a really dope thing to to watch someone else step into that. Yeah. Like just be there. Yeah. I don't I can't. I ain't never gonna be you not there. You're not there, there. Not Maybe there, with there. my man. <laughs> yes. But like, you know. But it is something to be said for that energy being commanded. That that is that for is sure. so true. I understand it, especially as a professional woman. You are always in this go, go, go mode yeah, and like, being oh, form and firm. Yes, but it's like Very Hendrick. <laughs> yeah, it's like no. I want to feel like a soft little flower. I want to be like, can you get that for me? Yeah, we just talked about the baby voice um, yeah. when we were talking with Amanda Seals. Wow, like, up when she's on the phone, I'll be like, who are you talking to? Him. Yes, you got a him. <laughs> a boy. I'm, mm, I love At that, that time, I did. At that time, I did. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Like for real. Yes, yes, yes I don't want to do anything. Yeah. yeah. You open the door, you drive. I don't care. Like I am not, I think people assume that I am this girl that always has to lead. Maybe if I trust the man and I respect the man and I value the man and he wants to lead it, I, you go for Please. it. Yeah. I will sit back. Now I'm gonna say something, but I will sit back. <laughs> Can I have a question or two? Yeah. I'm okay. not dying. I'll ride though. And we, we can figure this thing out together. <laughs> together. I'm not riding in silence. We ain't dying. Not if it's on my watch, but, but we but are going to figure questions. this thing. I'm going to have a couple questions. Yeah. But I'm going to be there. I love it. I'm going to be your Clyde, your, the Bonnie to the Clyde. I'm, I can't wait. Like, you know, but it's just not ever. Yeah. Lately, you know, you got to watch what you say. Yeah. Lately, it hasn't been mm-hmm. asked of me. And I'm looking forward to when life does ask that of me. It's coming. Oh, I believe it. It's, it's coming. coming. We I believe can't that. wait. I'm, we believe that. I hope he's outside. We're speaking it to existence. We manifesting it. That's, That's right. We affirming it. We're welcoming this energy for you. Yeah. yeah. It's yes. important, right? It is, it is think, very important. You know, when we're thinking about like love songs in general, like I always listen to them being like, you know, when this happens, I'm going to be so happy. You mm-hmm. know, like For sure. when it when I can sing this with somebody, because in yeah. my my old relationships, music was very important. I think in all relationships, music is ends important. up should should mm. be should be important. For yeah. sure. Hope that's yes. important. But um, yeah, I can't wait to have a reason to, to be like, nah, girl, I got to go home and get some. I'm, what your Scott say man, on the my way? Man, my man. What she say? <laughs> go walk up this oh, with oh, um oh. um mm. my man's coming through. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Y'all gonna have to yep. see me another time. Yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. Right I'm not gonna now. forget my friends though. That's another thing. I, I always want to make sometimes. sure that I'm fully myself. Yeah. Because yeah. sometimes, uh, I in my younger days, I would totally get swept up in relationships and be mm. like, who? Oh, you grow. Hey, that's right. Like I, I forgot. It's been weeks, three weeks. Yes, yes. yes. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. You gotta have that balance. That's yeah, important. you do. Well, Gia, we thank you. We really we appreciate thank you, you so much for being here on Real Love really? Scenario. We got one more question for you. Oh, yes, yes. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> that we walk through your real life love scenario. <laughs> if you had to choose, you interviewed a lot of people in mm. your time. Um, I'm hiding. Whose real Don't life hide. love scenario would you love to hear? Whose real life love scenario would I love to hear? Mm-hmm. I hope we know too much about them. Who loves it? <laughs> <laughs> Real life. Good on that one. I'm good on y'all know the one I'm talking about. <laughs> um, a real life love scenario. It could be an individual or a couple. Dead or alive? Yeah. Oh, mm. alive, preferably. Okay, right. But you can say dead too. Okay. Maybe. I will. I'd love to um know more about Ruby D and Ossie Davis. Mm. I love their love story. Yes. I just love them as people. Yeah. They are the quite literal like love in action. Mm-hmm representatives yes. and they were on purpose in their work they went for their dreams but they also showed up for their people and their community and i really love what they did and they loved each other like they really it loved so clear. to each like yes. it was beautiful yes. um okay and today somebody today that i would love to sit and talk to who's a love story that i really value 
Hmm. Or maybe you don't know and you haven't heard it and you're just curious. Curious, curious whose love story. Or there are parts of it that you may have heard about, but you never got the full story. And it's like, huh, I want to know how y'all did that. Right, right, right. And how y'all lasted or how y'all made it work. I mean, honestly, Oprah and Stedman are very interesting to me. That would That's be a good an one. interesting one. Because that would be such a good one. Yes. I don't know nothing. You don't. And Oprah said that on her show. She said, y'all ain't never going to know. You're not never going to know <laughs> nothing. But if I had to understand the strength of Stedman mm -hmm. and like how they met yeah. and mm -hmm. like what, what their love story is like, their love language, their yeah. love in practice, mm -hmm. what they do. They have everything in the world. So yes. like what, what does love mean when you have nothing that you need? Yeah. yeah. When you're like provided for, yeah. like, yeah. what does that feel like? Is it a freedom? Are y'all, mm -hmm. do you have to be extra intentional about just being regular human beings yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. like let's save up to buy this house and like get this car mm -hmm. and like hey babe like, wanna, <laughs> I'm gonna text you this house I want <laughs> if you can put it down I'm today I'm gonna text you which house we're staying at for the next month hey is more I'm of bored vibes. of this house yeah so we're gonna go to San Tropez so yeah. this is the house I just bought it yes. and yes. we're gonna put it back on the market in like two That's years such a good one though yeah it is. just because be like really... you mm -hmm. never you don't know Oprah ain't never gonna tell us no but I am curious about like the intricacies yeah yeah, and mm -hmm. not necessarily their business. Like, right, I don't right, want. Right, I don't yeah. need to know everything, but how? Because their love story has been very protected mm -hmm. and very sacred mm -hmm. um, to them, especially. So yeah, just how their love story is, how they operate, and mm -hmm. how what what love advice they would give. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I would love to hear it. Both of them, not <laughs> yeah. just Oprah, because Oprah, just Oprah, Oprah yeah. gonna give us advice. She's gonna tell us. Yeah, yeah. but I want to hear what Stephen got to say too. Yeah, yes, for that, sure. That would be good. That's a really good one. That's yeah. a great one. I'd have never even thought of that one. Mm -hmm. Probably because I felt like we're not gonna hear we it. Never. Yeah, never. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's the one that you said when you said what you're most curious about. I'm like, that, that's one I've that's always one. been like. That's hmm. one. That's one. <laughs> what <are you> doing? <laughs> yes. Well, tell us what you have going on. What's coming up? Where can we find you? Yes. Where can we tap into Gia? Yes. You know, I have been having this love hate relationship with social media lately I've been on and off like some days I don't sometimes I don't post for weeks I have to be better at just you know doing that sometimes but I will say you can follow me at Gia Peppers I'll post a, a, eventually um <laughs> and I'm on socials it's at Gia Peppers on everything um and I'm on TikTok chat I'm trying to do TikToks like the kids and then <laughs> you be doing your dances no not exactly like the kids like how the kids <laughs> like how the kids you know, I just be trying to you, know, you just be over there a little it's bit it's hard it is it's a job like, I can't get into it I'm I'm sorry but I guess that's the same thing our parents thought about Instagram like and so Facebook and MySpace yep 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 <laughs> and, right y'all make it we're officially at that age where we're like baby that's for y'all yeah, I'm, I'm too nah. old for that so y'all said I got to find it filtered and put the sound and then upload like it it's a it's lot a lot it, it is, is a lot. lot um but yeah um more than that is is turning into a limited like tv show for youtube revolt youtube and channel so Congrats. check that out thank you thank you that'll be out soon and more than that is uh, available all three we just wrapped season three so please check that out it's a great podcast i really really love the conversations we have um you can also check me out on amazon music is r&b rotation radio in dj mode it's a long title but if you Type in R&B rotation and should come up. Um, or if you ask Alexa, play R&B rotation radio and DJ mode, it will come up. Um, and we do great coverage of like everything there. Yeah. So just tune into that. But yeah, I'm working on a lot. And I'm, I'm developing a lot, but mostly internal work because there are some things that like I haven't fully stepped into and have been completely trying to avoid at all costs mm -hmm. as far as it comes to my calling. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, all right, Lord, you right off. Okay, fine, I'll find hey, keep running. Jesus, you just all right. Mm, <laughs> okay. But so yeah, just just pray for me, y'all. God, God is not not playing with me. Not through me yet. He ain't through with me yet. <laughs> but I'm so grateful to have this space. Again, people rarely ask me about love and relationships and stuff. So I, I love this type of combo. Yeah, Thanks so much for having so me. Glad you no enjoyed problem. it. We loved it. We loved the conversation. And we are serious about manifesting this Amen. energy for, for you. Sure. It's going to happen. And you. Yes, and me, yeah. for sure. You know? Both of y'all. Yeah. Yes, y'all. These knees is... 
They a little bruised up from all the praying. Okay. okay. Look, look. I was wondering Dre, where like, going. Where we, where we, like, where See, going don't, <laughs> don't do that. Don't. I was just wondering. I'm just playing. Yeah. I thought you was going to say, like, how the mega knees. Like, I thought you I was got about to be like, you outside. I got those That's why my husband needs to come on while they still strong. What did we say? Hello. Yes, that part. Because after a second, we're going to be two stepping at the party right yes, now. Yes, I'm still sir. trying to rap. I still got good knees <laughs> for praying and for <laughs> just a little bad. <laughs> and with that being said, <laughs> Gin Peppers. <laughs> Gin Peppers, ladies and gentlemen. Applause, applause, applause. <laughs>